starting out a little trip here. The bay just cleared up. It was iced over this morning. It was minus seven in flat calm, so it had glazed over, but now it's clearing up. Beautiful. If any luck, I'll find some trout on this trip. Lake Superior is my favorite lake by a, a landslide and it's hard to grasp how beautiful it is if you've never been but I would describe it like this. Imagine you're paddling on a lake and you get to this one section of shoreline that's really rocky and beautiful. Everyone goes to see it if they're on the lake. Lake Superior is pretty much non-stop that spot. Not to mention crystal clear water and can be phenomenal fishing. There's a big beach here, and an inflowing creek, and I'm going to spend a little time fishing it. Seems like a good spot. Oh, this is interesting. The creek is dumping in some muddy water here, and it's just going to that, between that transition from the crystal clear water to this muddied water. It's always a good place to fish on edges, transition zones, and that can be structure or water temperatures, and also water clarity. I'm enjoying this paddle so much, it's hard to think about stopping, but getting close to supper, so it's time to stop and set up camp as soon as I find somewhere I like. And also somewhere that's gonna be out of the wind. Tomorrow the wind will pick up a little bit, so I want somewhere to be leeward so I can get out in the canoe, hopefully. This is really special. If, if it is what I think it is, this is something I've looked for for a long time. I think this is a puck saw pit. I just got out here to look and see if this was a good place to camp. I'm not gonna camp here. You can see there's a big ring of rocks here with the snow in the middle. And I think it's a puck saw pit. It's about a meter and a half wide or in diameter. And puck saw pits are a feature that are found along this area of uh, Lake Superior. As far as I know, it's not really clear what they were used for. I've heard them being used as hunting blinds although that doesn't make a lot of sense for this because it's really not that deep like you couldn't get a person in there i've heard of it being used to cool food kind of like a, a cellar i guess it's keeping the snow cold and then i've heard of it being used as just like a spiritual site i really don't know if any locals know i would love to hear from you but hopefully it is a puck saw pit and that's a thrill to see one Finally, if it is, I'm not going to touch it or disturb it, but really cool to see. Beautiful spot to camp here. There's a pool here that just looks so pure. Camping in the bush here, it's almost always easier to find somewhere for the hammock than it is for somewhere flat and dry for the tent. But the exception is the Superior Coast. It can actually be hard to find trees that are big enough, usually pretty small 
But these two, oh, this is just a perfect spot. Lovely. I'll have a north view. If any northern lights turn up, I won't even have to get up out of the hammock. Just look up. Two nice big spruce. First order of business is to get this off of me. You know when you're it's getting later in the day and you just figure you're gonna be camped in somewhere not ideal and then a gem turns up out of nowhere. Such a good feeling. Oh, that's good. Lots of good firewood here too. There's only one problem here and that's that there's this little balsam fir that will poke into my hammock. I don't want to cut it. I know there are a million trees here and what's one little tree but grow into one of these huge spruces, you know, who knows, well it's balsam fir so it won't, but <laughs> let's put these dead alder branches on the top, bend it over in a way, take them off when I leave, there'll be no worse for wear. A little bit of a game trail here, hair I'm sure, because I can see droppings, little round droppings, and because this is a superior coastal trip, I can bring in whatever I want really, no portaging. So I brought in the trail cam. I'll set it up and see if uh, see if that hair comes by. Aiming it away from my camp so I don't get hundreds of images of myself or videos. Actually, I have it on video mode. Another luxury. Ah, cheers to a fantastic day. This is birch. Birch, I almost never find nice and dry in the bush. It's hermetically sealed. I think that just means that the bark holds in the moisture and it never dries properly. This nice piece, leaning up against the big spruce, all of its bark just about had fallen off and it is dry. What a luxury. Hardwood. You know you're a full-blown camping nerd when you are just tickled by the fact that there's a natural guy out point for all the guy lines on the tarp. Perfect distance trees for the for the hammock. I couldn't have drawn it up better. I feel so invigorated being back on Superior. It, it, it's, it's like the, the way a mountain makes me feel. It's just, it fills me with awe. Love looking out across the lake and, and seeing nothing but water. It's just remarkable. Mmm, smells so good, spruce. For another treat. So this is my favorite wine in Ontario that I've tried anyway. Cab Frank. Really careful with the glass on the rocks. When I started out backcountry camping, there were a lot of these in the food bag. And I ate enough of them that I was virtually sick at the thought of eating one. It's been uh, it's been a long time, but I feel like I'm I'm ready to eat one again. Problem with these is like this one's white cheddar and broccoli. You need a microscope to see the broccoli portions in it, just paltry. So I brought some dehydrated uh, broccoli from home, and well, obviously from home. It's all from home. Yeah, this is what I feel like tonight. I brought pretty simple food to try and motivate me to catch and eat fish. I'm, I'm not fishing with confidence lately. It's uh, the, the worse fishing goes for you. It's I'm, I've been really snake bitten lately. The worse it goes, the less you want to bother. You're just like, ah, why bother? I'm not biting. So bringing food like this is motivation. I would just love to cook up a trout tomorrow.
going to be a bit below freezing tonight. The lake's starting to skim over already, which is a bit surprising. Anyway, I have lots of extra food on this trip. If I was to get delayed somehow by wind or ice, uh, just again, I'm making sure I'm taking care of myself. I'm responsible for my own safety and rescue out here. I'm prepared. I'm enjoying myself. Stay here as long as I need. Oh, this fire's gonna feel good. Oh, that's nice. Whoa! <laughs> that's nice. So nice. Sun's coming just over the hill just in time too. <clears throat> I feel immediately so much warmer with both of those. Cool morning with a chilly breeze coming off the lake. Just around freezing right now. going to get some water and I can't help but admire all the lichen on these rocks. Such a hard scrabble existence. Imagine you're a bit of life in the universe and they tell you you're going to earth. Oh sweet I get to go to earth. Earth is beautiful. And then they say you're going to be breaking down rock over a process of decades and centuries. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a glamorous job but it's quite amazing. These beautiful branches, surprisingly dense, like they're fairly old. Bone dry. on the water right after this. It's nice and calm. It's supposed to be a little warmer today and I want to fish.
getting on my way. Wind is starting to pick up, but uh, hopefully I can find somewhere relatively quiet to fish. It's so awesome seeing that puck saw pit yesterday. I didn't show the location, like I tried to kind of hide where I was and not give any clues purposely. Plenty of people know where the puck saw pits are along the coast, and they're all pretty tight-lipped about it because it's a cultural value and you just wouldn't want the wrong person going to see it. So uh, that's why I didn't show where it is. It's just fun for some things to be secret. not expecting these. Didn't know anything about this area. It's close to home really, but i just never been. Spectacular. Just kidding. Not gonna catch any fish if I don't get my line in the water. It's been too beautiful. Just been exploring, but I really do want that fish, so it's time to get to work. Oh, the streak's finally over. Something's on. <laughs> I believe it to be a fish. Could be some lively driftwood, but yeah, I would bet it's a lake trout. Got lots of line out apparently. See it? It's twisting. Oh, be a nice, perfect eater. Come on. Really fighting now. Set the boat. Yeah. No. There. Oh my goodness. The streak is over. I finally switched up to this one. This is my go-to trout lure on Superior. Berkeley flicker minnow in green. And yeah, it connected for me. This perfect eater lake trout. I'll dispatch it first and then I'll show you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure it is a lake trout. The tail, it's got a good fork in it. Sometimes people wonder why I whack it more than once. To make absolutely sure that it is dead, dead. I can't stand the thought of it just being just, um, basically unconscious but in pain. So the extra bangs are just for humane purposes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. 
Nice little lake trout. I was planning to go down to the end of this bay where I've heard fishing can be good, but now that I've got my catch with this wind picking up, I think I'm gonna get back to camp. It's supposed to start raining soon. So it might be nice to just ride it out in the hammock for a little bit and then have trout for dinner. Back to camp and the rain's holding off. Just a few flurries actually. So I'll clean the fish now and put it on ice and then cook it when I'm ready. Not sure if this will pick up on camera, but you can see the lateral line really clearly on this fish. It's a sensitive part of their body, they can feel things on that line. Vibrations in the water, things like that. Other side, cut behind the gill plate. Continue that cut right along the spine. Just a shallow incision. And then I can guide the blade over the rib cage from there. Angle the blade down, don't press too hard or cut the, break the skin. That should be beautiful. I'm just gonna bury it here in the snow. Hopefully an eagle doesn't spot this blood. <laughs> but uh, I'll leave the carcass on a rock for an eagle or something. After cleaning a fish, it can be hard to get that stink off of your hands. One good way is just to kind of drag your hands over balsam fir needles. You can use spruce too, but spruce needles are prickly and, and coarse, and balsam fir are malleable and soft. And then your hands just smell like conifer. It's beautiful. You can use cedar leaves too. Oh. Thank you. Getting in the hammock, right as it's starting to snow. Couldn't have been more perfect. Just light flurries. Anyway, I'm gonna be extremely comfortable here. Let's get the backrest up. I've got my choice of red wine. A thermos of hot water for mint tea. Scotch and my water and a book. Start with the tea. I just heard an eagle. Let's hope it's checking out the fish. I, uh, I put a camera by it. Well, the fish is gone. Let's see what's on the camera. Looks like it took no time. I set up a time lapse there and it was gone very early in the time lapse. Looks like it was a crow actually, or a raven. Can't tell on this little screen. Cool. Okay, I'm just going to season them in the hand, I like to do that and avoid dishes, although it's hard with two fillets in my hand. I may have got myself into a pickle here, folks. There we go. Oh yeah. Season the back. 
Yeah, I really hate making dishes out here. I'll go to great lengths to avoid it. It's not Instagram worthy, but it's practical, I think. Avoid some more dishes here. Oh my. Oh, that looks good. This is my first time cooking fish in this non non-stick pan. <laughs> this stainless steel. I missed the non-stick. Look at that. It's just the extra batter is just caking all over there, but anyway, the fish came off clean, so that's the most important thing. That's good. Mm. I had this mystery batter at home and I wanted to use it up. And I just realized what it is, is pancake mix. I had wanted to try pancake mix as a batter and I put it in this container a long time ago and then forgot what was in there. Oh, that was good, very satisfying. I wouldn't do the pancake batter again. It, it wasn't that it was bad. There are just so many other better options out there in my opinion. I have this lemon pepper batter that I really like. I also just like a little Tex-Mex seasoning or a little um, salmon spice. Those work great. And this way I, would, I wouldn't do again. Live and learn. Found this really interesting rock. I guess it's a geode. It's got, I don't know, maybe that's quartz in there. And then this green stuff. It looks like algae almost. You put it in the water because the water really tends to bring out the colors. Huh. I'm tempted to bring that home. It's pretty interesting in there. Paddled past this bowl in the rock earlier and I wanted to check it out on foot and there's a little plant here which I believe is saxifrage something like that it's one of several arctic plants that grow along superior because it's just a colder climate the lake cools the environment around it it uh, grows some plants that are, are more commonplace in the arctic which is quite amazing back out and hoping to get to the end of the bay and fish an inflow there. That's That was my main goal for the trip was to fish that. So gotta pack up and leave tomorrow. There's a big point to get around tomorrow. It stretches out about three or four kilometers I think into Lake Superior. So if there are any swells, it really swells up around that point. So I want to get started early in the morning to get around that point. This will be my last chance to get to this bay. Coming up to the mouth of the creek, and it's very shallow here, so I'll probably have to fish offshore a little bit, but uh, I'll give it a whirl.
time to pack up. Great camp. So glad I found the spot. I just took down the trail cam. Hopefully I find something on it. Things are pretty calm out here so far, which is great. Coffee in the canoe, wonderful morning. I just realized I don't have anything to stir with. Put my sugar and coffee whitener in there already. They don't call it a spoon for nothing. Sun dogs today. Coming around the tip of that big point now. Thankfully, it's still very calm. A little trip and sometimes when I'm out on Superior seeing no one except for the odd motorboat I can hardly believe how there aren't more canoes on this lake but then when I think about it it's really not that hard to imagine it's extremely difficult to plan a trip on Lake Superior if you're coming from a distance away and you need it to line up with certain dates Superior really demands a flexible schedule if you can have a flexible schedule and you can understand the the perils of Lake Superior it's deadly, but it can be just the most rewarding paddling experience. This was a beauty.